Good morning. For most of us in this state, February the 4th of 2020 was just another day. For the men and women who stand behind me and others who protect and serve communities across Alabama, this date has a very different meaning, both historic in our state and tragic for those who carry a badge. For us, the 4th of February marked the seventh murder of a member of Alabama law enforcement in barely 13 months, a record loss of life and a disturbing pattern that today we stand here to say must end. Alabamians have heard the heartbreaking stories. January 13th, 2019, Birmingham police officer Sergeant Watasha Carter responded to a report of cars being broken into. He arrived at the scene and approached Jeremy Owens, who was identified as a suspect. Owens pulled out a gun and opened fire and killed Sergeant Carter. A week later, January 20th, 2019, Mobile police officer Sean Tudor received a tip about the whereabouts of Marco Perez, a criminal wanted on several charges and on the run from police. Officer Tudor followed the tip to an apartment complex, found the fugitive, and attempted to serve an arrest warrant on him. Perez pulled a gun, opened fire, and killed Officer Tudor. May 19th, 2019, Auburn police officer William Beekner responded to a domestic disturbance call to assist a woman who was in fear of her boyfriend. The knock on the woman's door was answered not by the woman, but by her boyfriend, Grady Wilkes, who was wearing body armor and wielding a rifle. Wilkes raised the gun and opened fire, killing Officer Beekner. September 16th, 2019, Tuscaloosa Police Investigator Dornell Cousette received a tip about the whereabouts of Luther Watkins, a criminal wanted on several charges and on the run from police. Investigator Cousette followed the tip to a residence, spotted the fugitive, and pursued him as he attempted to flee. Watkins pulled out a gun and opened fire, killing Investigator Cousette. November 23rd, 2019, Lowndes County Sheriff John Williams checked on a commotion at a local convenience store. A large group had gathered in a parking lot, blocking access to gas pumps and blaring loud music. As Sheriff Williams worked to return the peace, Will Johnson stepped out from his pickup truck, later raised his gun, and opened fire, killing Sheriff Williams. December 6, 2019, Huntsville Police Officer Billy Clardy took part in a task force operation to intercept a large delivery of drugs. When the suspect, LeGeronomy Brown, arrived, he sensed something was up. Brown pulled out a gun, opened fire, killing Officer Clardy. On February 4th, just a little over a week ago, Kimberly Police Officer Nick O'Rear joined a car chase where officers from a nearby town of Warrior could not get a vehicle stopped. When Officer O'Rear pulled in front of Preston Johnson's vehicle, Johnson fired a dozen shots in rapid succession. Officer O'Rear was hit multiple times and later died from his injuries. Each of these events in isolation is unacceptable. When viewed together, the deaths of these heroes are even worse. Why? This is the most members of Alabama law enforcement ever murdered in the line of duty in less than a 13 month period. And the wave of these senseless deaths over the past year cannot be the wave of the future in this state. As you have heard me say before, the first civil right of every person in Alabama is to be free from the fear of violence. The fear of, the fear of crime and violence extends far beyond the number of Alabamians who are statistically counted on as victims. There are entire communities relentlessly burglarized, communities where drug transactions go on in broad daylight, and communities where stray bullets pepper fences and occasionally result in the deaths of innocent people, including children, inside their homes. And even when they're not directly victimized, the daily lives of all citizens, young or old, rich or poor, living in or near these communities are plagued by fear for their own lives, the well-being of their children, 
and the security of their homes and belongings. Consider, for instance, how the heinous crimes committed against Cupcake McKinney and Anaya Blanchard have shaken the sense of security for mothers and daughters across our state from all walks of life. The principal passion of every human is the desire for security. And as our society relies upon that desire, we depend on, upon a thin blue line, our law enforcement officers to fulfill that desire and prevent anarchy from gaining a foothold in our communities. But despite their critical role in preserving our way of life, do we support them? We spend hours and hours in this town talking about overcrowded prisons and very little about victims. The vast majority of our criminal justice policy debates center upon reducing punishment and limiting the tools of law enforcement and prosecutors, all driven by a desire to reduce prison population at all cost. But I submit to you that Alabama does not have an incarceration problem. We have a crime problem and good policing Proactive policing stops crime from happening in the first place. We need our local law enforcement to be engaged in our neighborhoods, stopping the bad guys and fostering a safe environment for the good ones. But that kind of policing must be supported and welcomed by the citizens for whom law enforcement serves. Sadly, good policing has become more and more difficult because of our culture and societal attitudes toward law enforcement. That obstacle is something that each of us must change. Here's a challenge I want to issue today. In the aftermath of Alabama's seventh murder of a police officer in the past year, to our parents, sit your children down, no matter their ages, and explain to them that the men and women in law enforcement leave their own families behind so that they can keep other families safe. They are figures of authority that should be respected. Parents, I ask you to also remember this. A child's attitude toward police officers begins with you. Please set the right example by both your words and your actions. Teachers, spend time during the school year highlighting the noble career of law enforcement whose mission is to simply protect and serve. Help students understand their civil duty to respect police officers as extensions of the law. News media, think carefully before you publish stories in social media posts that paint law enforcement officers in a negative light before you have all the facts. You are driving a narrative that can be helpful or hurtful to a community relationship with law enforcement. I ask that you spend as much time highlighting the good police work that takes place as you do criticizing those bad apples that exist in every profession. Policymakers, don't get lost in the rhetoric and heavily funded advocacy that leaves you with the impression that Alabama's criminal justice system is too harsh and that our prisons are full of individuals that your constituents want back into your neighborhoods. The policies that you pursue send a message to both criminals and law enforcement alike. Please make sure that you're sending the right message. To our citizens, we need your involvement. Law enforcement needs your partnership. Get to know your police chief and your sheriff. Find ways to serve alongside them. Tell them when you see suspicious behavior or evidence of violence and drug dealing. Invite them into your neighborhoods to intervene early and swiftly before order is lost. And now to those who would consider harming one of Alabama's law enforcement officers. Understand this and let me be clear. An attack on law enforcement in Alabama is an attack on all of her citizens, an attack on all Alabamians. If you attempt to take the life of a law enforcement officer in this state, we will hold you accountable and see that you spend the rest of your life in a cinder block prison cell. And if you take the life of a law enforcement officer in Alabama, you will have likely forfeited your life as well. Understand that the penalty for killing a law enforcement officer in this state includes death. And I can also be very clear when I say this. 
but to those who would attempt to harm or do harm law enforcement in Alabama, that our state, local, and federal partnerships have never been stronger, and we will not rest until we are satisfied that justice has been served. And lastly, to the brave men and women who wear that badge, my heroes, please hear this. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Keep fighting the good fight because your cause is righteous. Know that you have our support and our eternal gratitude. This week, I sat at the funeral of Officer O'Rear. And the pastor said that law enforcement is called and that your efforts are ordained by God. He's right. And today, I would simply say, to all law enforcement in this state, may God bless you and may he grant you protection as you strive to protect others. This time, I'd like Sheriff Cunningham to come forward, please. General, you took us back down the road uh, telling us about those seven officers that were slain in the line of duty. But now I want to take it one step further. Those were not just officers. Those were fathers. Those were mothers. Those were uncles. Some were grandparents. Some were brothers. Some were sisters. That's the family. And that's the family that we, as law enforcement officers, me as being the sheriff and these chiefs and other sheriffs, we make that commitment to that family that we want to bring your loved one home. And it's hard every single day when they go out and they're patrolling the streets and they're looking out for your families. But at the same time, we're looking out for their families as well. So uh, we beg you all to take heed and to listen to what the general just said. You know, law enforcement is a, it's a profession. It's a profession where these men and women come to work every single day because they got a given attitude and a given spirit. But it takes all of us working together to make sure that this profession is not a dying profession. We want to see our loved ones leave, go to work, and come back home. That's our only request. But we got to do it by working together. At this time, I'm going to bring up Chief Partridge from the uh, Police Chiefs Association to make some comments. You know, each one of these men standing behind me today represent over 16,000 police officers in the state of Alabama. Just think about that for a second. There's only 16,000 police officers for over 9 million people in the state of Alabama. And as a father of a police officer, there's no worse fear than your phone ringing late at night wondering what that phone call is going to be. As a chief and the chiefs and the sheriff standing behind me tonight, that is their worst call, is to be called and told that an officer has been injured or killed in the line of duty. You got to think about this. Law enforcement is the fabric of our society. And without law enforcement, what do we have? We have chaos. This is the state of Alabama. We should not be burying police officers the way we're doing it right now. We should not be having to be standing here today talking to you in the press about police officers being killed in the line of duty from gunfire. And I believe one of the main reasons why we're standing here having to tell you that is because we're having to push back on false narratives that have been pressed over the last decade about law enforcement across our country. When you have protests and you have individuals who scream, kill the police, what do we want now? We want dead police. What kind of society are we trending to? It's not one that I know, and it's not one that you know. So we have to, not only as law enforcement officials, push back on this false narrative, but our citizens in this state and our communities have to push back on this false narrative. I cannot 
fathom what these families have had to go through over the last 13 months in this state of burying their loved ones. Why? Because they took an oath to get up every morning and go out and protect our communities, do what's right, and put criminals in jail. Where is our society gone when we have individuals who will use a weapon first? What do they really think they're going to gain from that? What do they really think that they're going to gain by using a weapon on a law enforcement officer? Are they going to temporarily run? They're going to be caught. And as General Marshall said, they're either going to spend the rest of their life in prison or they're going to face the death penalty. So we as Alabamians need to step up as families and teach our children the correct way to live their life and be law-abiding citizens and teach them to respect law enforcement. We can't continue to do this. We can't continue to bury our loved ones because of this idiocy that's going on in our country. Like I said, we're better than that. And I challenge the news media to stop pushing this false narrative that these people are putting out by putting them on the news media and giving them the free airtime that they want. That's not helping our problem. That's only exacerbating the problem. So I ask each of you, when you see a police officer, tell them thank you. You know, we're just like any other profession. We're not perfect. And when we see those who aren't and are doing things that are wrong, we get those out of the, our, our departments and we get them out of law enforcement. But it seems that they want the press and some in our society want to really, really push those few bad apples to make it look like we're all bad apples. <clears throat> and that's not true. I thank General Marshall for allowing us to speak today. But think about this. Think about where you would be in the state of Alabama in your respective communities if we had no law enforcement or if those law enforcement officers, you know, some across the country are scared to do their job because they're scared that they're going to either end up on a YouTube video or they're going to end up losing their job and their profession because of of, of false pretense. So where does that leave us? We've got to stand up for these men and women. We have to push back on these false narratives and we have to let them know that we stand behind them every day when they go out and they do that job. Thank you. Let me close with this and then everyone here will be available for questions. Today, one of the things that I hope we do is we honor those seven individuals that we talked about earlier that lost their lives in protecting their communities. We hope that we honor their families who have suffered significant loss as a result of the commitment of their loved one to protect and to serve. But we cannot honor those who have died if we don't change the narrative in this state and in this country about how we perceive law enforcement and the work that they do. As I stand here today, I hope today is a beginning and then we're not here talking about this again a year from now, five years from now, or ever again.